Welcome back to Remod. Last series broke because we had too many mods, so this time I very carefully added a whole bunch more mods onto the mods we've already had. So it was kind of a great idea from Discord to have uh, to to revisit that arena style, so that the prisoner aspect of things is still relevant. But to go back to an arena style playthrough where people that join our colony have to fight in an arena, they have to fight in a gauntlet, they have to pass a test, but. Instead of just having a vampire prison, why don't we have multiple different factions? And that's when people in the com comment section from YouTube, I saw this one quite frequently, saying, add werewolves. Okay, sure, we'll throw in werewolves. We've got vampire werewolves. And then I thought, well, we're sort of doing the whole supernatural thing, so the cultists from the Rim of Madness mod, mod also works. Plus, they're all the same mod series. So we've got cultists, vampires, and werewolves. And then I thought, well, that's all kind of magical, so why don't we also have Rim of Magic? So we've also got wizards. And then I thought, this is Rimworld. It's about technology. It's about progression. Like You, you can end up getting on a spaceship and flying off. It's futuristic. So I've also added uh, robots and cyborgs and all that type of thing. And then I thought to myself, well, what else happens in space? What What's magical in space? And then I remembered Jedi. So we have, to recap, vampires, werewolves, cyborgs, Jedi, cultists. Um, I'm sure I've forgotten something else. Oh, did I say wizards? It doesn't matter if I haven't said wizards. And then I realized we've done a series on just about every single one of these mods independently. We have the vampire prison. We had the uh, Gene Corp one, which, which I'm rolling into werewolves. We've had cultists, obviously one of our first series. So... Why not have the most ambitious crossover in Rimworld? Well, not only the most ambitious, also mod pack as well, because I have a feeling this is going to break. Why not also have the most ambitious crossover from all of the Rimworld series thrown into one? Welcome to, uh, I haven't really got a series name yet, but we'll call it perhaps something like, you know, Ultimate War Infinity Battle. I don't know, something along those lines. Let's dive in. Now, I've already set us up a uh, the characters that are going to feature for each of our factions. We'll designate different parts of the base for different factions, and each faction will have different gameplay effects for. And that way, it should keep it fresh and interesting, but keep everything nicely separated out so we can explore the mods individually as we go through them. Because I've already got experience with most of these mods, it shouldn't be too overwhelming, shouldn't be too confusing or anything like that. So, new colony. What, it doesn't really matter which one of these we pick. It will only affect... Um, in fact, it won't affect anything besides, say, like, we pick uh, the vampire ones, I believe. Make night times uh, last longer or something like that. Yeah, the, the sun's power is weakened. Night is lengthened by 10%. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to pick the default rumor one because, like I said, I've already really set up the scenario here. We're going to start with Cassandra Ruff just so that we can get up on our feet. Just so that we can make sure everything is working as intended. I've done a very brief uh, playthrough using this mod pack and everything seems to be working fine. Nicely balanced and I've gone ahead and found patches to make sure the compatibility is going sort of as well as you could expect running this many mods. We're going to get 20% color coverage. I've, I've talked about this before and sort of had this argument going before. I like this one just because it means we can interact with all the factions. There is a possibility of world conquest if we actually want to do that. Blood. That seems appropriate given the last series. And then we'll just go ahead and generate ourselves a whole new world. And this is going to be sort of the first indication of how ridiculous things are. So we have over on the side there, the Rebel Alliance. They're neighbors with uh, an infantry division from the Rim of Madness mod. They are also neighbors with a bunch of werewolves. We then have uh, the Blue Manatee. So these guys are the Zabrak factions, also from Star Wars. Down here, we have a Dark Wizards Coven. Of course we would. Along with some Twi'lek, some Bandits, some Mandalorians. On this side of the map, we've got the Agency, dedicated to hunting down and ensuring that there are no supernatural things. They're going to have to work out for them this time around. And then finally, at the very top of the map there, in Shiv Ridge, not a place I'd probably want to live, uh, we've got the Elder Kings. The Elder the elder Kings? The Elder Things, which are um, sort of like Pentagon-obsessed aliens. But we'll cross that when we get there. So where do we want to start is the real question. Well, we are not running Dub's Hygiene mod this time around, because I'm trying to ensure compatibility so that we don't crash every single time. So... I'm looking for anywhere, ideally, with just mountains. Mountains, I think, would be fine. Mountains and, and roads, specifically, so that we can actually interact with the other factions, so that if they ask for our help, if we're called into things, we might want to go for that. We might want to go near the rebels, but saying that we are going to be... I, I mean, it's a it's a, it's a society with a vampire, a werewolf. Uh, we've got Gene Corp and, and Donuts Bengers, sort of um, slightly ethically questionable vivisection experiments. We've got, of course, Krupp Vush. And his, uh, what was essentially meant to be a Jedi, but ended up being a Sith faction. We've got many things to contend with. I think we need to be sort of in this area, surrounded by, what is this? Seaside Townsfolk of Nightridge. They're a neutral faction. These guys hate us. That seems appropriate. We'll go in this area. I feel like we should be closer to, uh, the Imperials here, rather than those guys. Um, oh, also there's a Strike Platoon. Uh, let's go around... I'm looking for a mountain sort of in this area that's also fairly close to a road that's preferably not... Uh, let's go for, like, what about somewhere like here? 
take a look. Well, I don't want caves, ideally. I'd kind of like to avoid caves. Or we go for caves and we build our house in the caves. That'd be kind of cool. Um, okay, that's getting a little bit more temperate. So this, so it gets warmer the more northerly we go in this situation. Yeah, it definitely does. Okay, so we're looking for someone with kind of a longer growing period than that. So we don't have to worry about it too much. Although these are all fairly similar. Sure, let's go for here. This seems pretty good. Next. Now, like I said, this bit's already set up, so what we've got to do is go prepare carefully, and I'll talk through our character backstories, and here we have it. Now, a lot of you will recognize the characters kicking around here. They are the main characters from every RimWorld series we've done thus far. So, from the top here, we have Jilp, the test experiment, of course, Kropvush there, who eventually became a horrible vampire with his prison get up straight from last series. Now, this guy is, uh, you know, of course, a vampire, but he was... Jilp before that. The man has great survival skills. Good at building, good at cooking, good at plants, good at keeping himself alive. And because he did that, because he succeeded in keeping himself alive, of course he became a vampire. So his skills are very much focused around that. Not so good with things like social, intellectual, because of course he was basically out in the wilderness. Next up we have Igor, head of the Cult of Throog from the Cult of Throog series. Good at shooting, good at plants, but incredibly good at social questionably skilled in everything else there, kind, greedy, diplomat, incapable of caring, seems appropriate, uh, but she is incredibly good at social, founded a whole cult, and managed to convince many, many people to join it, so that's going to be her basically one and only strength alongside plants as well. We've got Krupp Vush from the Star Wars series that we played not so long ago, the, uh, what was originally a scientist turned Jedi Master after being chased down by the Imperials there. He has decent melee skill because of course he is uh, somewhat skilled with the lightsaber. Good at crafting, good at intellectual. This guy is our is our more technical scientist. You know, we had quite a droid heavy colony that time around. Uh, he's a bit more of a technically minded character. We then have King Bonnet Bigley. Uh, sort of crazed a little bit maybe too ambitious king who managed to convince two idiots to follow him to build a kingdom and build a kingdom boy he did and eventually became a full-blown lich so that is of course represented there uh, apparently some sort of mute jailbird as a lich though he's incapable of many 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 things he's a very very low tier character but by comparison he is capable of raising the dead firing magic death bolts he's our powerhouse he's going to be the one defending the colony at least during the early game here and then of course we have donit benger successor to the cult of eagle the guy who founded gene corp and the guy who did a load of genetic experiments and then of course eventually imbued himself with the powers of the werewolf through his uh through his genetic manipulation this guy more of the uh more of the the bio biology sort of um genetic side of things as i said good at animals good at medical comparatively crop is much better with the technical side of things so we've got Basically, all of our bases covered. Have we got a good cook? Uh, oh, yeah, you know what? Jilp is our cook. So, of course, he is uh, he's our survivalist. That being said, this is our colony. Hope you guys like it. This is going to be crazy. It's going to be weird. And each one of these guys is going to be in charge of their own faction. Jilp, of course, in charge of the vampires. There is a fifth, sixth generation. Go for Gangrel Vampire. I'm not really sure which one is best. So, we'll sort of experiment with those as we go. We've got Igor. Going to be head of the Cult of Igor. The Outer Gods Worshipping mad woman herself she's gonna found a whole new cult crop of course with his robots with his uh with his cybernetics founding his little sort of um you know sort of cybernetic jedi order hopefully we can get some uh, general grievances going along and then we've got bonnet head of the wizards we do of course have room and magic so we're gonna get plenty of wizards turning up he put himself a little hogwarts in the corner and then finally donitz with his gene corp his genetic manipulation his werewolves i think this is going to be interesting and then the five factions will fight um, in their arena to see who gets control over the, the prisoners, the people we capture. This is going to be kind of cool. Now, for those of you who are patrons, and, and when we're dealt with the patron names, of course, the rest of you in the comment section as well, for those of you who would like your names in this series, probably specify a faction you want to go to as well. Uh, you know, if we get a vampire, it's more likely the vampire's going to go to Jilp's faction. Uh, oh, this isn't a bad map. Oh, I like this over here. This seems cool. Vampire settings. Disabled events, only standard or custom. So what we can do here is we can set them to standard, at which point they will turn up with trade caravans. But last time we did that, it didn't really work too well. I'm going to set it to events only. So vampires do not spawn in a council of raids, but can appear in special local maps or world incidents. If we set it to standard, as we saw last series, they will turn up in trade caravans, and they'll catch fire immediately and die, which is a little bit lackluster. Um, though it would give us control of them. Why does the map change when I click these? Excuse me? Look in the background. What the fuck is that? Uh, let's go with standard. Sure, why not? It, it's not, it's not going to bother us that much, right? And if a vampire turns up, they'll bury themselves in the hole and we can dig them up. As per usual, we have some of our, we've got like expanded animals mod there. We've got the alpha animals mod. We have, um, 
the the bone mod, obviously, with the calcium polymer, the bones, which, of course, will be going for jobs faction there, and many, many, many other things. If you look down at this bottom bar as well, my god, that's vomit juicing. We've got things like rim atomics, because people were telling me to take a look at that. That will be sort of corrupts territory. We've got a the Power++ Plus Plus mod, which I saw in the workshop this morning. I thought, that looks awesome. Let's put it in this ridiculous mod pack. And because I already know most of these mods, we have the Advanced Research mod, just because there is so, so much to see this time around. This, I think, will allow us to keep a better track of things um, and sort of see what research flows into what. That's a lot of research. My god, this could take a while. So you can clearly see here, we've got, like, Igor's research in this area. We've got uh, rib replacements, bionics. That will be kind of crops, uh, crops and... Donitz's territory around there. We've got all sorts of stuff. Powered armor, pulse charge munitions. This could take a while. Well, let's get stuck in because this is going to be a fairly hefty series, I think. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Jilp is in the daylight, so he needs to get into hiding pretty quickly. It's 6 a.m., so he's got a couple of hours right now. First things first. We are playing with Combat Extended. We do have, you know, the ammo types. We do have... Um, I, but I am not playing with combat extended guns. We're playing with just the base game with the combat extended changes. So I do like some of the changes added by combat extended, especially like the darkness, the, the accuracy changes, things like that. But we're kind of a bit closer to the base game than previous combat extended series because we ju we don't have that expanded guns or whatever mod. So let's get people equipped. Donitz, come grab yourself a gun. Uh, Igor, grab yourself a gun as well. That certainly couldn't hurt. We've only got two rifles to start off with here. Krupp, though, of course, has his lightsaber. Of course he would have his lightsaber. Now, right now, of course, none of them are skilled. Uh, he, Krupp hasn't even awoken the force yet. Probably because he's on a new planet. I don't know, my head cannon. He has to attune himself to the natural power of the planet here. Bonnet, as a, as a mage, will immediately start off with certain mage powers here. We have access to Death Bolt. We have access to Flight, but that's it right now. You've got to remember these are all base level as well. So these aren't going to be particularly powerful starting off. But then, of course, as we level up Bonnet, he gets pretty out of control, huh? Cool. This is, this is pretty nice. Now, because we don't have ammo for this, we can still use it, right? Yeah, so this is just sort of your base game standard rifle. But it still has those bullet dynamics, those bullet ballistics of Combat Extended, which I really love. Okay, cool. Where's Jilp gone? He's hiding in a cave. Jill, he is a fifth generation vampire, so I'm not that worried, but he is going to basically have to fight. I kind of want to clear this area out and live here. This is kind of cool, huh? Oh, it's a real shame it connects up to the edge of the map there. Um, wow, this is uh, this is not the best map I've ever had in Rimworld, I'll be honest with you. Okay, sure. Let's stick with this cave area. I like this. We could sort of uh, build across here. In fact, there's only one entrance to it. So we could basically turn this into a... Okay, we've got to worry about this, but that's not such a big deal. We'll just build a big wall over it or something like that. I, it's such a tiny, minuscule chance of raids actually turning up and trying to get through here. I'm not really too bothered about it. All right. Wow, this is... Um, don't really know where to start. A little overwhelming, huh? So first things first, let's get our our characters set up here. So what have we got? We've got some quite high manipulation. Um... Both of these two have crypto sleep sickness, so they're going to be a little bit down. But for the time being, everybody's just you sort of base game room world porn. Um, zero manipulation. Oh, that's magic manipulation. Okay, so only Bonnet is capable of magic right now. Does kind of make sense. Let's set up the work tabs and give everyone their sort of specific area of expertise. I've been very careful about making sure people have strengths and weaknesses. So Donitz is going to be obviously the, the, the town doctor here, the head of Gene Corp. I think there's no one better suited to that. We'll sort of set up our, our basic jobs here as well and sort of set up our regular priorities. Finish can be maximum. I think for now we're going to be doing a fair amount of hunting. We don't have anything. Uh, I, I would consider that we don't have too many overpowered mods as well. We don't have that ridiculous, you know, tilled soil mod that gives you like 200% fertility off the bat or anything like that. It is base run mod with some difficulty mods and then some, uh, some expansion mods. We're not really sort of adding anything else to that. So these guys are all incapable of magic. I guess we'll set... So this, what it, what it means by magic is like magical crafting or magical related uh, things such as siphoning mana. Of course, none of these other characters are capable of doing that. So we'll only let Bonnet deal with those for now. All right. Wardening, Eagle. Eagle, the maximum, e Eagle, the head of the cult, should definitely be in charge of the prisoners, I think, there. Jill, also not too bad. And then, of course, Donitz, not too bad either. Animals, that'll be Donitz with Gene Corp, of course. And then Jill, you can cook and we'll get rid of Bruin for now. That's not relevant. Now for hunting, as weird as it looks... I think we pretty much only want Krupp and Jilp doing that. Melee hunting is possible with Combat Extended. Uh, obviously, Jilp is going to soak up as a fifth generation vampire. has just these crazy reflexes. So he's going to be able to, if we look at that, he's not only got uh, the, the dodging ability uh, because of his additional bonuses to, you know, his enhanced consciousness moving, whatever else. He also has damage soak. So as a fifth generation vampire, 
when he gets bitten, it's going to soak up a lot of the damage. Only super lethal things are actually going to do any damage to him. A regular, like, being shot in the toe, not really going to affect him. But if he obviously gets his arm chopped off, that's when we've got to worry about things. This is fine. I think this will be fine anyway from what people have been telling me about how, you know, truly powerful Jilp is here. Let's go back to these work tabs a minute. All right. Um, hunting. You know what? We can let everybody hunt for the time being. We'll sort of work that out as we go here. Uh, building. So, Jilp in the past... Building with vampires has been questionable. Should be okay this time around, though. Uh, repair. We'll, we'll, we'll lower repair. We haven't really got anything to repair right now. And then we'll prioritize delivering and just basically have one builder while we've got such a small colony. Harvesting. Growing needs to be kind of a higher tier there. Eagle. Cultist Eagle capable of doing a decent amount of plant work. Uh, you guys can... You guys can grow, but maybe not harvest so much. We want, to, we want to avoid missing out on some crops there. Quarrying mining, I'm going to untick for now. We'll deal with that as that becomes relevant in the future. Right now, just a basic structure certainly wouldn't hurt. Plant cut, I always like setting to maximum, because of course, you're only going to designate whatever plants you want cutting anyway. So you yourself can determine how important this job is. Uh, drugs is irrelevant for the time being. Fabrication, you know what? I'm just going to blank out all of these, and we'll come back to them later on, I think. Uh, stone cutting. Now, the question is, do I want to do my usual Rimworld tactic of just building everything out of wood to start with, or do we actually want to try and avoid falling into that trap this time? You know what, I'm going to put some points in that, and we'll see how that goes. And then, uh, we actually have a lot of people incapable of doing a lot of stuff, don't we? That could be a concern in the future. I mean, Bonnet is essentially useless. Krupp is only very good at research, and then we've got, like, Donuts is even missing out on certain things as well. Man, we've only got two people capable of hauling. Could be a problem. Like, genuinely might be a, a slight concern in the future. That's okay, though. So let's, um... I think I'm going to have to focus on micromanaging a lot of the hauling, especially during the early game, so we can get some slaves, some ghouls, some thralls, whatever you want to call them turning up in the colony. Uh, Igor, if you want to clean, because we don't, actually literally have no one else capable of cleaning. Jill already has enough on his plate right now. He's a cook, so that's kind of literal as well. Research is irrelevant. We will just have our boy Krupp doing research. Donitz could potentially tech into research as well. He's got a fairly okay intellectual skill. And then we are good. I think we're fine. Let's get to it then. So I kind of want to build in this area. This is what's taking me, mainly because we've got this massive mountain we can also do things with also. It's quite nice to defend. Build a big wall across here, force them to come down through this area, and then fight them in this big field. You know, build a big kill box across and shoot, shoot across there would be pretty good. Don't have to worry about fresh water this time around as well. Thank God for the, for the first time in a very long time. We don't have to worry about toilets or showers or fresh water or block drains or anything like that. Good Lord. Performing force meditation. Does he really need to do that, even without force? Oh, because I guess he is attuned to the force. He's just not uh, He's just not capable of accessing the powers of it quite yet. There we go. Okay. And then go and get your... Where's his lightsaber crystal? Did I just turn to pick it up rather than equip it? Yeah, I did. All right, drop that on the floor. Go and equip that one. He has his damaged crystal, which he had for... Uh, oh, vomit all over your lightsaber crystal. No, that's, that's a classic Jedi trick there. All the great best Jedi masters had to do that. Hey, um, excuse me. There we go. And then, boom, look at that. There we go. Now I feel like we're back in stand. Let's just make sure everything's working as intended. Bonnet, go and back up Jilp. He might need your help on this one, my friend. And Bonnet is capable of unleashing a, a pretty devastating blast here. So one thing that's cool that I have noticed about, uh, about the magic mod is that now, you might remember in the past, whenever we tried casting magic, occasionally we wouldn't be able to cast things. There was no real explanation to why. They fix that now. So if, say for example, we're trying to cast it here, you can clearly see the crossed out eye means he doesn't have vision on it. Whereas... You know, now that we can more clearly see where we're launching up our targets. I think that's going to be massively, massively useful. Give him a hand. Boom. Nice shot. Did that, did that even harm Jilp? No, it doesn't. That's cool. This this combo could be very, very good. Now, he needs to eat as soon as possible, right? Yeah, he's almost out of Vitae. Just just go nuts, my friend. Honestly, go butt wild. Go and get yourself some, uh, go and get yourself some blood. We need to set up their priorities. So, thinking we go recreation to start the day off with. Uh, for, for Jilp and obviously end the day with everyone else there. And then we'll just go nothing but work for a while. Because there's a lot to be done here. And that's that's many, many hours of work we've got going on there. Oh yeah, let's paste that down. Perfect. A sign we don't really need to worry about right now. And that is more or less everything set up. I feel like I've forgotten something. But I really don't think we have at the same time. What's everyone doing? Just wandering right now, huh? Out for anything to schedule work. So... What are we going to do about the building? Uh, we'll stick to wood to start off with, right? Wood's not too bad just for just for a little bit at the starting. There's, there's plenty of wood kicking around as well. So let's go ahead and draft and undraft everyone. Get them to work. Jump's going to be asleep because, of course, it is the daytime and he's a vampire. So we don't particularly want him wandering around catching fire immediately as we've had last time. Starving vampire. Well, feed. 
Why is he not? Oh, because he's probably because he's asleep is why he's not feeding. I, I think they only feed during their recreation time. Seems a little bit odd. Um, and then, of course, he actually can't get to any other animals to feed on right now because of the sun. I think this cave is a pretty good place to actually start living. So I'm just going to build a gigantic wall across here. We'll live in this area. We can just sort of roof over the whole thing. Um, we'll, we'll get Jilp to quickly clear out that insect hive. That shouldn't take 30 seconds to quickly knock down. There we go. All right. And then let's start working on this. Um, oh, it's apparently not producing, so it, we, we could have left it. It doesn't matter too much either way. Apparently vampires can get by on such a little sleep anyway. They don't really mind waking him up. Right, let's put a door sort of here. We'll build a kill box, obviously, later on. Right now, probably not super, super relevant, and when we crank up the difficulty, then it will be. But for the time being, we're pretty good. What is all this crap? We've got, like, reception tables, linkable pews. Oh, for the for the church. Oh, man. Eagle threw, threw with a bone thrown in her, in her cult. I think that'd be kind of awesome. So if nothing else, we can at least set up a stockpile for the time being. Um, okay, that's calcium polymer, right? So those walls aren't bad. We could put another block there as well to sort of really stop people digging through that area. Um, let's put the dumping stockpile in here for now. That's, that, that's fine. We can always build bedrooms like through the base a little bit more, but this is just kind of convenient for access, huh? Right, okay, that's pretty great. Now we probably also want to do build roof area across basically the whole thing. They're normally all completely roofed over anyway, but there is a little bit of natural light getting in there. Okay, let's just do something like that. That works pretty well, I think. Okay, and then that could be our stockpile zone. We'll just go clear all. Oh, God, what have I done there? There we go. Okay, clear all. Uh, preferably not rotten or fresh, although we probably want fresh foods for now. Let's go critical and then allow all, take away chunks, corpses. Preferably not nuclear waste. Um, not a big fan of that one, thank you, Chief. No rotten either. There we go. So that should be more or less everything that we've got to worry ourselves about. Um, we've got a little bit of medicine stuff. That's fantastic. I'm so used to playing the, um, what is it called? The, the Naked Brutality. Actually starting off with medicine and food is a, is a goddamn lifesaver. Wait, no storage space. Wait, did I not allow fresh? Um... A fresh. Oh, I didn't allow corpses. I should really allow animal corpses. Preferably also not insects either. That's pretty That's pretty great. Thank you. Okay, sweet. So we've got a decent storage area. So anything else that dropped with us that I haven't been able to pick up yet? Um, you've got 720 steel there. That's a huge amount, huh? What a great start. Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Jilp is blood starved. Jilp has just unleashed, unleashed his inner beast. So what we will probably want to do is uh, run and hide. Because the last thing we want is Jilp to go nuts and then eat Bonnet or Donnet. Run, 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 run. Okay, what's he hunting right now? Mega spider. Could you not pick... Literally like a whole herd of deer right there, my friend. Literally like three donkeys. But he, instead, he's going to go for the mega spider. Jump must be very hungry. Um, what the hell's a mega spider? Uh, oh, God, it's the insect, isn't it? That's me thinking it's added by the Alpha Animals mod. No, it's, it is these things. Um, wow, he's doing so well. Yeah, level 5 vampire is quite powerful. Of course, we actually got that level 5 vampire when we got one of those events I was talking about earlier where vampires just spawn on the map. Dug it up, opened the coffin, level 5 vampire. So it explains why when we were actually playing it, it took Jilp so goddamn long to kill him. What's he... There we go, he's hunting... Why is he only hunting predators? He's going to eat a leopard. Just finished off his mega spider. Now he's going for a leopard instead. Meanwhile, there's like literally a whole group of... I mean, we've got... I mean, spider's pretty more convenient there. Um, we've got a whole bunch of gazelle that he's just ignoring. What the hell's he going? Oh, Jump's Fury has come to an end. There we go. Problem solved. All right, team. You guys can squad back up now. Uh, you've avoided his wrath for another day. And also, holy shit, this is a great way to hunt animals. Look at this. Well, I guess we've... Oh, no, not the squirrel revenge. Careful, Jilp. You might have finally met your match. We've got a whole bunch of gazelle. My God, that worked out well, huh? Um, who's our builder? Oh, it's Jilp. Right, that explains why nothing has been built yet. Sure. So, Igor is harvesting poplar tree. I think I might have designated a little bit too much wood for this first day. Um, let's go ahead and cancel those. Does Bonnet need to eat? Because he's a lich. He's got mana. Uh, I'm going to assume his food bar never goes down. No, it doesn't. Okay, so because he's a lich, his food and his rest, he never needs... He, he's not alive, essentially. He's undead. Very similar to Jilp. So, he ne never needs to worry about that type of thing. Um, let's stick down... Some beds, just to get us through this first night, I think. Let's go furniture, bed, and then we need to really start planning out, you know, the base uh, as a whole. Because right now, we've just sort of got this this very generic cave. Kind of a... I, I've got a good idea in my head. I sort of need to communicate to you guys what that idea is. So I'll plan out some bases for the future. I'll draw something up in Photoshop, or I'll, I'll use the planning tools in-game to very much get my point across about what this series is all about and what we're going to do with things. So seeing as Bonnet doesn't need to sleep, I guess we could give him just a whole bunch of work and then maybe a couple of hours of recreation so he doesn't go insane. Is he affected by... 
Recreation? I mean, yes, he is, because it's, his bar's clearly not at 100, and he was just, you know, sunbathing there or whatever. Um, obviously not sunbathing, it's nice time, you would it. Just relaxing, staring at the stars. So we do have to worry about that, but, you know, he can work all the time, which is fantastic. Why is he not doing anything? Is his schedule still set to... Schedule is set to work. Um, Bonnet, my friend, could you... Oh, because he actually can't do anything. Right, okay. Um, we could set to mine. Is there just any sort of generic jobs we could give him for the time being? Harvest, grow. Yeah, I guess he could grow some crops for us, seeing as he's awake all goddamn night. Let's see what we've got to start off with here. Um, we'll put down like a couple of 8x8 eight eight areas, I guess, and sort of see what we can, uh, see what we can come up with. So let's go 8x8, eight 8x8. Eight, eight okay, so corn, obviously a great idea, and then we'll do some rice as well, just for the sort of short term here. Whoops. Uh, just to give us that short term and long term food. Let's put those down there. We might want to keep the gazelle off, but that's fucking rimwood. So, let's take a look at his bloodline then. So, he is Gangrel. He has access to War Form, Mist Form, uh, Feral Claws, and Bat Form. All of these we saw with the Gargoyle bloodline. All these quite cool. Obviously, the War Form is, is pretty nuts. We've got Animalism. Summon a pack of wild animals to come to your colony. That sounds super, super useful. I actually vaguely remember us using that on a live stream many, many um, months ago. Might have even been last year in hindsight. We've also got, what's it? Night Wisp Ravens. Ravens incapacitate the victim for a short time. Any action taken against the victim will disperse the flock and end the effect prematurely. That's super cool for if you want to stun someone, stop them escaping, and close the gap, I guess. We've got Spectral Wolf. Uh, materializes, attacks the target, and then returns to the ether. And then finally, we've got Communion. Three ghostly bats seek out targets, draining their blood, then deliver the blood to the master. For a guy that spent so many years living in the wilderness amongst animals by himself, this seems like the coolest bloodline we could have got for him, huh? That was kind of a blessing in disguise, and I especially like the sound of this, this beckoning. Just summon a whole pack of animals for hunting reasons. That would really, really help out. How many times have we had it, especially last series, where we had a cold snap, we had a nuclear winter, and there was no food to hunt, and then the crops wouldn't grow, and then we were super, super screwed, probably partially down to the fact that we had our 100,000 prisoners at some stages as well. So that could work out super well. My god, these vampires are kind of OP, aren't they? I might lower his generation, because him being generation 5 seems to be super, super OP. Might just make him a little bit weaker. They called Jill, Jill Pant on his bullshit. He said he was fifth generation. He's a lie. He's he's seventh generation. He's a he's, he's there we are. He's seventh generation. He was he was lying to us all this time. Gives him damage soak of fifteen. We don't want to start super super OP with no challenge, right? Uh, we've already got a very OP start with you know a Jedi master, a literal lich, and and a vampire, and these quite smart characters. We do kind of even though the characters themselves are good. Jobs we're kind of screwed for, you know, a certain one person can do cleaning in the entire colony. That's not super practical, so the second we can get some more colonists, the better, because we do need to delegate a lot of jobs very quickly. Bonnet, though, capable of working all the time, he is super, super slow. Even though he's a witch, he can work constantly, but look at his work compared to Krupp, or Donitz, or anyone else. You've also got to remember, this guy isn't super unskilled, either. He does have three, four points there. He's... Man, he is ridiculously slow, isn't he, huh? Holy shit, I didn't realize it was quite that bad. Base is quite nice. Uh, if you can all the insect corpses, but we might have to set up a dumping zone or something, because this is uh, this is going to quickly get out of hand. Right, let's put this... Uh, let's put just garbage over here. Critical. Um, let's go ahead and allow... Let's kill her all. Allow rotten. No, let's allow rotten and fresh. I guess just human-like and insect corpses for now, huh? And then we'll also use uh, chunks as well. Okay, I guess nuclear waste also not a terrible idea. We'll just put chunks over there. We'll set that to important just in case certain other chunks we want to keep in an area close to us, like um, steel slag chunk, great example. Or, you know, say we would decide to build everything out of marble, we might want marble chunks to be in our base. So if we set that one to critical, that one's too important. We can prioritize one stockpile over the other there. One thing we probably also want to do is put a place for rotten animals. So those so things that if we don't get refrigeration up quickly, it'll be a whole bunch of rotten gazelle, for example. So let's clear all, go allow rotten, and then any corpses, I guess, are, are fine in that situation. You know what? Let's put down a couple of wind turbines. We, we need power early on, and we've kind of already prepared a decent area for them subconsciously there. So let's go something along these lines. Connect those up, and then we'll just bring it straight to the base as well. I kind of want to refrigerate this room as soon as possible, and maybe move the bedrooms into the actual caves. Probably not a terrible idea. Um, right, let's go temperature, or maybe we just want to build a smaller fridge for now. That's probably not a bad plan, because we probably haven't got the, the power. Oh, you know what? Look, there's somewhere through there as well we probably want to check out. There's definitely not enough power to cool all of this short of building. Other, Even if we built a wall across here, this is massive. Um, let's go for maybe just something like that. That's fine. That's actually not a bad idea, I'd say. Um, put a door in there as well, and then let's go. Because that way they're also not going to be going in and out constantly and letting the temperature change. Um, just put down a couple of coolers. Do we have the... Oh, we actually do have the... Uh, the resources for that also. Let's get Jilp to start work on construction, my friend. Thank you very much. Hey, the frame rate, actually not too bad these days. I don't know how the hell the frame rate's better than the last pack we were using when this has 10 times as much, but there we go. Uh, not literally 10 times as much. 
And then a stop hold zone for some deer. So definitely don't allow rotten. Thank you very much. What are we going to do about Jilp? Jilp needs blood. So I guess we will build the vampires in charge of the prison again. Just because Jilp can drain prisons. We'd rather him drain our prisons than our actual goddamn colonists. Oh god, we're already on. We're already in mental breakdown mode. Crop and Igor and Donitz are not too happy. Bonnet, he's a lich. What else could he really care for? And Jilp's sort of same story. They're both undead. They haven't really got any wants or cares in the world. Um, we want to put in here foods and preferably animal corpses, but obviously not insects. And then I'm going to also say medicine, uh, just in case we get a whole bunch of herbal medicine or something along those lines. So we got medicine. Is there anything else we need to keep in there? Um, what about, like, drugs? Drugs don't rot, do they? I have no idea. We'll, we'll just keep it like that for now. Perfect. All right. And then we'll go to this one. We'll say absolutely no food, no corpses, nothing else. Um, and no corpses in there either. Let's get these hauled as soon as possible. Because that's a lot of food. I don't particularly want to just go to waste. And the question is, what's behind these walls? Because I want to start planning out the base now. I'm, I'm, my kind of plan is is smooth a lot of these walls over and build rooms at the end of them all. It, at some certain cave systems in the world are perfect for doing that. This one's fairly small, but I want to see what's through here. Because we might find that... Oh, nothing, huh? Um, there's definitely something behind there. Because you can see that it's uh, there's, there's somewhere else through here. It might just be a whole bunch of uh, very similar things. Like, yeah, a tiny little cave system. Is that daylight? Oh, that's kind of cool, because we could put some defended solar panels through here. How much of that is thin roof as well? Oh, this could work. This could actually work for a, de for a decent power supply. Um, let's mine all of this out, and let's ignore roof area on this, and then we can put a bunch of solar panels through here. That's a nice, consistent, protected power supply. Let's start fixing the mood problems, because the worst case scenario we could get is someone, like, breaking and going running wild or something along those lines and, and, and fucking off from the base permanently, or, or potentially going on, like, a murderous rampage. If Jilt decides to go on a murderous rampage, or Bonnet decides to go on a murderous rampage, or if Krupp decides to go on a murder, You know where I'm going with this. Basically, uh, we, we're going to lose someone permanently, and I'd rather not do that, because these guys are cornerstones. They're integral to the campaign. If they die, we will just freeze and put them on ice and then, and, you know, wait until we get, like, a resurrect serum or whatever and bring them back, because they are way too important to just quickly throw away here. Right, let's put that there. Don't bother building that wall. Let's get this area mined out, and let's start putting down some bedrooms. Now, this is important, and I actually have no good suggestions for this. So, you guys at home, leave some suggestions for the name of the colony. Let's leave some suggestions for, well, obviously, you know, the settlement as well, our faction... I will pick whatever is the most upvoted on this video, and that will be our name going forward. Uh, for now, we'll just hit the OK button, because we can always rename it, because we do have that mod available to us. Uh, let me know. I will, I will take those tomorrow. But in the meantime, let's leave it here. I want, I want to be able to better explain what my idea is for this series, so I'll come up with a decent plan. The fuck is... Oh, God. That happened quickly. Okay, you know what? We'll worry about that later on, huh? Let's give a shout-out to the insane top-tier level patrons who made this series possible, who I will assume will want to chuck some names at me, if you don't mind, for, if you want to, obviously, for joining RimWorld. You guys will have to fight to earn your place. We are going to put down the arena. We're going to have people fight one another to join one of the great five RimWorld factions. Let's give a shout-out to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kurito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Blurry Bunny, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Demons and Eris, Donald, Fukunur Vasquez, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Haydog, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smog, Muskratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Palvis Presley, Skaz, Circle of the Swedes, Stannis Amanis, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Vacuous Vacus, and Zazzy7011. Thank you all for your support at the Insanity Levels on Patreon. Thank you for making this channel possible in the first place, and I hope you guys like this kind of ridiculous idea. Very surprised it hasn't crashed once yet, but you know, it's only the first episode, let's give it some time. And a shout out, of course, to Asaro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachnid44, Ben Troke, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Duncan217, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Gray, Hashi Damar, Hancock, I Swallow Comb, I See the Great, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Jose, Yoran DeVries, Jessica Smith, John Holiday, Johnny No, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beard, Justin Block, Justin Walters, Lusami, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Limburg, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Panther Pearl, Payback137, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, Shari, Smirtworm, Talar, The Insane Pickle, The Forsaken One, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorkus, and Zico 2. Thank you. See you guys tomorrow for what is hopefully a very stable and fun gaming experience, because my blood pressure can't take any more.